Hello friends, welcome to the second video on mathematical logic. This video will introduce you to the concept of theory of inference. So we will see what is meant by theory of inference, what are the various methods which are involved in solving problems of inferences. Come on, we will move on. What do we mean by theory of inference? Inference theory is concerned with inferring of the conclusions from a given set of hypotheses or basic assumptions which we are going to refer or call by the name premises. By applying these certain principles of reasoning, we uh, call them to be rules of inferences. So they are nothing but uh, like clues which are available for solving any problem of mystery or investigation. So if these clues when properly reasoned out may lead us to the actual uh, cause of the problem or will help us to reason out what is going to be the outcome of the problem. So that's what all about theory of inference. So we can say that any conclusion which is arrived by following these set of rules will be called by the name valid conclusion and the argument can be referred as a valid argument. Hence we say that the theory of inference is nothing but a set of premises or hypothesis H1, H2 up to HM which leads us to a conclusion C logically if and only if H1 and H2 and H3 and HM is going to imply us the conclusion C. In other ways we can say that H1 and H2 and HM conditional C must be an tautology. Tautology is going to be a statement which is going to have all its entries to be equal to true for all the possible combinations of H1 and HB which we take. Okay, so what we are going to actually do is we are going to see that the set of clues which we have say suppose clue number one clue number two clue number three all of these up till clue number m which we refer by the name premises or hypothesis together so it's like you must not ignore one for the other it's like a combination one in turn may be dependent on the other so we say that H1 and H2 and H3 and and so on HMN together must lead us to a conclusion. So this is what is the theory of inference is all about. Whether these hypotheses can lead us to an valid conclusion. So what are going to be the way in which that can be done? We have two rules for rules of inference. One is referred as a rule P, the other one is referred as a rule T. Rule P says that a premise may be introduced at any point of time in the derivation. So you may use any of these clues like H1, H2 up to HM you have, right? So you, it is not like uh, they have to be uh, introduced in the problem or uh, in the derivation in an orderly manner. If you think that the first one will, the second one is going to be of much use to me or will lead me easily to the uh, destination or the conclusion rather than the first one or if you find that H2 and H3 have a link between them so it will help you to crack the problem a little easier than starting the uh, problem with clue number one then you may go according like the premises may be introduced at any point of time in the derivation. So the rule for introducing the premise will be referred by the name rule P. The second one is called as rule T which says that a formula S may be introduced in a derivation if S is going to be tautologically implied by one or more of the preceding formulas in the derivation. So you are deriving something. So if 
combining the using clue one or your hypothesis one and hypothesis two, you have come to one uh, midpoint like this is going to be a uh, statement which you have inferred from these two of them. Now what we can do is using this point which you have arrived at, you can move on to clue, uh, uh, combine it with the any of the other things and then move for proving the next quantity. So the formula which you have tautologically true statement which is going to be over here can further use to develop your concept of uh, theory of inference. That's what we say by formula S which is going to be tautologically true from any of the one or more of the preceding steps in the derivation can be applied to solve the problem furthermore. So if you are using a step which is being derived out of any of the given premises then you refer it as rule t. If you are using the given premise itself then it is called by rule p. Now we will see what are going to be the rules that are frequently used in the solving the problems of theory of inference. We say p and q will be implying as p and p and q can also imply as q. So it is both of them are existing which means one of it is going to be for sure can be derived out of it. This rule is called a simplification. On the contrary we see that p can imply only p or q. So it is not that both of them can be implied out of it. It can imply only either one of them. So you say it is p implies p or q. In a similar pattern q can imply p or q. You call this as addition. The next one is p comma q is equivalent to p and q conjunction. So we need to keep it in mind whenever I am separating a quantity by a comma then this quantity refers as the logical operator and to me. So when I say a comma b it refers to a and b which we logically write it as a conjunction b. Okay. So wherever we have comma we need to keep it in mind that this comma now stands for your AND operator. So in a fa fashion, so it refers to AND which means it is your conjunction and so when it comes to the next one we see that P comma P then Q. So this comma is nothing but our conjunction P, the statement P or the proposition P and P then Q will infer us a Q. This is referred by the name modus ponens. A negation q comma a if p then q a negation q and a if p then q we infer as a negation p this is called as modus tollens uh, the next one is if p then q if q then r like you have it like a chain reaction p to q and q to r then i can go from p to r so this is referred like a chain rule P to R but you refer it by the name hypothetical syllogism. A negation P and a P or Q will infer a Q. This is called as disjunctive syllogism. A P or Q and a if P then R and a if Q then R we infer as an R which you refer as dilemma. A P or Q and a negation P or R will lead us to a Q or R which we call it as resolution. At first strike we may think that oh so many formulas have I to memorize all of these to solve problem. Don't worry we just need a few of them to be taken in the memory so that these formulas will help us solve majority of the problems without any hindrance. The formulas over here are just such that they will help us to reduce the number of steps in which your conclusion can be arrived. Like you are using them smartly then you can arrive at uh, the conclusion using uh, 4 or 5 steps. But if you are able to memorize just these 5 of them maybe you will be taking a little longer number of steps like instead of 5 you may end up with 8 number of steps but for sure we will be able to arrive at a conclusion called as C. So the important formulas which we will need to memorize so that we can handle the problem in a better way will be a P comma Q as I said a comma will always stands for 
a conjunction so if there are going to be a statement with p and another statement with q you can combine them to get a p and q next one a p and a if p then q inverse q you call it by the name modus ponens this is your chain rule p goes to q q goes to r then p goes to r so starting point to ending point you call this as hypothetical syllogism and this conditional statement if p then q can be equivalently written as negation p or q using your formula for equivalence and if you have a if p then q then you can flip the elements when you flip it what happens is they flip with the negation sign so this statement will be referred as contra positive so keep in mind just these 10 five rules instead of those 10 rules will help us solve the problem in a very better way so try to memorize at least these five of them or in a way like if you are doing more and more of problem and using them more frequently then obviously you need not have to spend extra time memorizing them obviously they will get into your mind move on we will see the various methods involved in solving a problem on theory of inference the first one is direct method second is indirect method the third one is called as a uh, rule of conditional proof this is going to be off rule of conditional proof consistency or inconsistency of premises and the last one is truth table so what do we do in direct method is we have a set of premises h1 h2 h3 and so on up to hm which has been given to us so we can use these premises all of them so we say h1 and h2 and h3 and hm in any logical sequential way so that we arrive at the conclusion called as c which is desired for us so use all these clues to arrive at a conclusion this is called as direct method so what is meant by indirect method so in order to show that a conclusion c is going to follow from the set of premises h1 up to hn what we do is we assume first that c is false so when i assume c is false what happens i include negation of c as my additional premise to the given set of premises so along with h1 h2 up to hn what i am doing is i am including a negation c also to the set of premises so what will this negation of c which is going to be assuming the faulty one lead us to obviously this will lead us to one contradiction therefore what will happen instead of arriving at c we will be arriving at a negation f if i am including this negation c therefore we prove that the given set of hypothesis will lead us to a conclusion c so whenever we want to do the problem using indirect method what do we do is include one more additional premise which is called as negation of the conclusion and then you arrive at an contradiction which says that the given set of premises are going to be actually true or valid so this is the method of indirect way of proving the problem in your rule cp which is called as conditional proof what we are to do is if you have the conclusion of the format if r then s that is you have an conditional statement as a conclusion your conclusion c is going to be of the format if r then s then we take r as an additional premise so along with your hypothesis h1 h2 up to hn you include r also and then what do you do you start with an if part and then you arrive at the L, uh, then part which is going to be s so you include your r in the premise and arrive at s so which is going to be the same as using the hypothesis and arriving of if r then s so conditional proof is probably applicable more easily for the conclusion if your conclusion is going to be of conditional type if the conclusion is going to be of conditional type then what do you do conditional type problems include your r and then arrive at your s so this is going to be your rule cp or conditional proof and the last one which is going to be inconsistent is nothing but when the set of hypothesis or the formulas lead us 
to a contradiction so if the values which we have in hand lead us to contradiction the conjunction of them implies a false to us then we say that the given set of premises are going to be inconsistent in nature what will be the vice versa way if not if you are leading us to a true then you call it to be not inconsistent or consistent okay so if they lead us to an true you call the set of premises as consistent and if they lead you to an contradiction or a false then you call the set of premises as inconsistent so these are going to be the various methods using which we are going to solve the problems of theory of inference we are now given you a uh, just a basic glimpse the main quantity over here is to take all this five quantities into your memory if you are done then we will meet in the next video where we will start solving problems on theory of inference happy learning keep learning